Euclid's 42nd proposition says that we can construct a parallelogram whose area is equal to a, the area of a given triangle with one of its angles being equal to a given angle. What's first step going to be? This is going to be pretty heavy. Uh, so I'm going to draw something and then hide it so that the diagram doesn't get cluttered up. Okay. So let's first extend BC on both the sides. Okay. So we have one line BC. Now we are going to figure out the midpoint of BC. We know how to do that. We draw a circle at B of radius BC. We draw another circle with center as C and radius as BC, which means we are going to get two intersection points of these two circles. We can join these intersection points E and F. It's a little bit down, so let me bring it up. So E and F. So let's join this E and F. Now this EF will intersect line BC. So let's mark that point of intersection as E. Now this is the midpoint of BC. All these constructions that we are doing is based on what we have already done and proved. So we don't have to revisit how this is a midpoint. Okay, now that I have found the midpoint, let me remove all these circles. Now what I will do is I will copy this angle at C and at E. Circle with center at C and DQ as the radius. Then circle at C again with the DP as the radius. This circle of radius DQ intersects this line. Let's mark that point of, of intersection as H. Of course, there is another point of intersection here, but we are not interested in that. We are interested in this because we want the parallelogram on this side. Okay, so we have this. Now keeping H as the center and PQ as the radius. Let's draw a circle. Now if you notice this circle, that is of radius dp intersects this circle which is of radius pq at this point. So let's mark that point of intersection, not this one, we are not interested in this side, this side. And now we join cm and extend it. So we have got an angle here which is equal to this angle. Now that we have got this line, we don't need these circles. So let's hide off these circles. Now we have to construct a line passing through E, which is parallel to this line, which we just now constructed. Now, how can we do that? We can repeat the same process and copy this angle here. That is one way. Another way in which we can do is, Copy this angle here. Of course, this and this are equal. So, because they are corresponding angles, if we want a parallel line, then it has to be, corresponding angles have to be equal. So, by just copying this angle, we, we can't really say that these two lines are going to be parallel. But by saying that we are copying this angle here, we can be absolutely sure because these two angles are corresponding. This is the parallel lines and EC is the traversal. Okay, anyhow. So let's do that. So keeping E as the center and DP as the radius, we draw a circle. Similarly, keeping E as the center and DQ as the radius, we draw a circle. We notice that this circle, which is of radius DP, intersects this line. BC. So let's mark that point of intersection. There is another point of intersection. We are not interested in that because we want it here 
on this side okay now keeping this as a center that is i as a center we draw a circle of radius pq and we look at the intersection of this circle and this circle of radius dq and of radius pq we mark the intersection point which one not this one but this one and we join these two and extend it and now we don't need all these circles so let's hide off all these intersection points and mm, circles and now we can say that this particular angle is equal to this angle so let's mark that angle also so these two angles are equal so what did we do we copied this angle here and we copied this angle here these are corresponding angles between two parallel lines and BC as the traversal. So these two lines are parallel. Now, what we need is a line parallel to BC passing through A. How do we do that? Again, remember, between two parallel lines, alternate angles should be equal. So we have an angle here, ABE. We copy this angle to here. Again, how do we do that? Again, circles, we use circles to do that. With A as the center and BC as the radius, we draw a circle. Again, with B as the center now and AC as the radius, we draw a circle. Right? We are not interested in this intersection point. We are interested in this. So, Let's mark that point of intersection. Okay, now I don't need this circle, so let me hide this. And now I join U and A. So when I join U and A and form a line, it intersects these two parallel lines that we created. So let's mark those points of intersection. Now I don't even require U as well. So let's hide it. So now I'm saying that this parallelogram, let's mark this point also, uh, I think I hit it, is E. So parallelogram EFGC is equal to this triangle. Now how do we prove that, that this is equal? Because the proposition that we have learned says that parallel, uh, triangle and a parallelogram between the same parallel lines are equal to each other. But remember here, we have taken the midpoint. So its base is half of the base of triangle ABC. That means this parallelogram is just half of the parallelogram that we would get by having a parallelogram of twice this triangle. Now remember, if I move this point, if I change the angle, the area of the parallelogram also changes, but it is always equal to the area of the triangle. I can change the area of the triangle automatically, the area of the parallelogram also changes. So that is proposition 42. Again, let me remind you, there is a link to a PDF book which describes all the 48 propositions of Euclid's book one of elements. That's it for now.